Con, how did you get started in this business? Uh, well, I played all my life uh, around uh, Knoxville, um, East Tennessee, and I got invited to the Acrefrills Golf Tournament mm -hmm. and went down there and was just in awe of all the people who were playing celebrities and pickers and, uh, and uh, artists that I'd always had such great respect and awe for. They were all there, and of course, and I, a friend of mine by the name of Bobby Denton was with WIVK Radio in Knoxville, Tennessee, invited me to go with him. So I went down, we played golf, and, and that uh, evening, after they had a little banquet and all this stuff, they went to like a uh, courtesy room in, at the lodge down there, in the big room, and everybody sat around, and they had what they call a guitar pole. Yep. Yep. So I was sitting there, and Chet Atkins was there, which, you know, uh, is unbelievable to me. I mean, I didn't see hardly anybody after I saw Chet. And, uh, <laughs> and, but there was a lot of writers and a lot of artists. And anyway, we were sitting around singing. And my friend Bobby, uh, he'd been known to, you know, kind of uh, break an elbow every once in a while. And um, so we're all sitting around there, and, and they're passing the guitar around. And all of a sudden, you know, Bobby says, well, come, why don't you sing one? Oh God, oh, Bobby, <laughs> what, are you crazy? And uh, and then somebody else spoke up. Said, yeah, sing one, sing one, sing. So anyway, I took Chet's guitar. Oh Lord! Wow! I'm like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I sang a, a couple of songs. And there was a lady there uh, by the name of uh, Bonnie Taggart. She was the publicity uh, director with the Warner Brothers Records. Uh, heard me sing. Mm -hmm. And the next week. They chartered a plane and came to East Tennessee to hear me perform with the band uh, at a place called the Village Barn. Uh, I played the Village Barn, also played the Corner uh, Lounge in Knoxville as just a piano thing. And uh, anyway, next thing I know, long story short, I mean, they, they offered me a contract. And then when they offered me a contract, I had contract offers from uh, five major labels. And Starts uh, going oh, around. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Chet called me. I, I never will forget him calling me at the at the village barn, and I thought somebody was putting me on, and I, I let him have it and hung the phone up. On it. Oh, no. <laughs> he, hey, believe it or not, he called back. I, I, I said, who is this? I said, this is not funny. Who's this really? It, yeah, I said, if you think it, he said, it's Chet. It's Chet, Con. I said, who is this really? You know, this is not funny. I said, you know, you're, you're dealing with somebody's heart and soul here. And he calls back. I said, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Atkins. <laughs> So I went down and had an opportunity to meet with him. I remember walking into his office and I was going to shake his hand. I was so nervous I missed his hand. He finally, re <laughs> he finally reached out and got my hand and put it in his and we shook hands. Uh, That's funny. It's, uh, it's funny how you play all your life, you know, and uh, then you go play golf in the golf tournament and get a record deal. So it's wow. crazy. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Wow. What a neat story, though. Oh, it's, it's, it's truth. You can't beat the truth. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I love the story. It was told on a one of the country's family reunion shows. He was the only show that Chet did. Um, he did one. Um, Bill Carlisle mm -hmm. called me one night when we were getting ready to tape, and he said, "Chet said he'd like to do the show. You want him?" And I said, "Well, duh." <laughs> and I said, "We'd we'd ask. We'd call Chet's office every time we were doing them and ask him, and no interest." Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, "Well, hang up the phone." He said, he's, "He's eating a bowl of ice cream. He'll call you in 20 minutes." Chet called in 20 minutes. Hello, Mr. Atkins. Want to do the show? Yeah, I'd kind of like to come over there. Well, Bobby Bear was there, the Whites. He had produced, uh, Skeeter Davis was there. Right. She was still alive. All Johnny Russell was there. So a bunch of people that he had produced and just loved him. So it was kind of a love feast on Chet at that point, just to be able to uh, have him in the, stu in, in the room. And he stayed all day. That's great. It was like uh, he was only going to stay half a day, and when we broke for lunch, he said, I'll stay the next part if I can sing. We go, okay, what are you going to sing? Uh, I still write your name in the snow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great old. Oh, Lord. You got another song for us? Yes, sir, I do. Because we're running out of time. Oh, are we really? All right. Well, I'll, I'll try to speed it up. <laughs> uh, here's an old song that I uh, first heard Charlie Rich sing. And uh, I got a story about Charlie Rich, too, if we have time. <laughs> Big boss man, can't you hear me when I call? Big 
big boss man, Lord, 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 can't you hear me when I call? Well, you ain't so big, you just tall, that's all. Well, got me working, boss man, working around the clock. You just won't let me stop, big boss man. Lord, 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 Lord. Can't you hear me when I call? Well, you ain't so big. You just talk. To see where Country Legacy lives in full episodes, go to countryroad.tv. 